Hello, my name is Mark Garnick, and I am a physician at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and a faculty member at Harvard Medical School and serve as Editor-in-Chief of Perspectives on Prostate Disease, a Harvard Health publication written for patients and their families to help explain the complexities of prostate diseases, including prostate cancer. I'm going to comment on two very important studies that have recently been published that have evaluated whether the routine use of the blood test, the so-called PSA test, or prostate-specific antigen test, when applied to asymptomatic patients can actually lead to a decrease in the overall death from prostate cancer. There are two such studies which have gained widespread media attention recently. The first, or the European randomized study, looked at approximately 160,000 men, half of whom were randomized to receive periodic screening with PSA testing, and half who were not. If the, P if the PSA became abnormal, men were then biopsied, and in those patients who were found to have prostate cancer, those, cancer, those patients with their cancer were treated. The second study, the, Europe, the American study, or the so-called PLCO study, randomized approximately 77,000 men with a combination of both PSA testing and physical examination of the prostate gland compared to a control population. And if either of those tests became abnormal, the patients were then referred to their physicians for further diagnostic testing and uh, uh, treatment. The United States study was completely negative. At the end of approximately nine years, there was no difference in overall prostate cancer death rate in the screened versus the unscreened population. This comes as very, very disappointing news. In the European randomized study, there was a relative reduction of approximately 20% in prostate cancer deaths in those men who underwent screening compared to the control population. However, nearly 1,410 men had to be screened and approximately 50 men had to be treated to avoid one prostate cancer death over a period of 10 years. So while the original intention of these studies was to show greater, greater differences in prostate cancer death rate between screened and unscreened patient populations, unfortunately, neither of these studies have really shown that with any degree of robust information. What is a patient supposed to do? If a patient's been diagnosed with prostate cancer, we today look at the various characteristics of that patient's cancer and try to determine whether or not that cancer is going to be clinically active or inactive. And indeed, many patients who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer can actually forego treatment for long periods of time and even perhaps forever because their prostate cancer, which was diagnosed by a PSA, uh, screening, uh, by a PSA screening study, may not necessarily have needed to be diagnosed in the first place or detected in the first place. The more important question is whether or not a patient or a man should undergo a PSA test in the first place. I think it's very important for both patients and their families to discuss with their physician the pros and cons of undergoing a PSA-based test, especially in light of this new information. If the sequence of events is that of an abnormal PSA test is found, leading to biopsy, leading to a diagnosis of prostate cancer, and treatment is fully understood, and the pros and cons and the consequences of the treatment side effects are fully understood, then I think the patient will be in a much better position to make an informed decision of whether or not to be tested in the first place. Thanks very much for your attention.